All right. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Speedometer. Alright, so this should all look very familiar. It's Wednesday and I still work at the same spot, so we're leaving from the same spot. We're on DuPont now. We were on Michelson. We're heading to MacArthur. We're in the beautiful city of the pre-planned city of Irvine. be riding to the city of Orange so I'm pretty much gonna take the same route that I took yesterday which I don't know if that's gonna end up on YouTube or not is definitely uh, part of it will be on YouTube for sure which is might be a short because Electric DIY Life mentioned he liked the airplane videos and I happened to see a private jet and then a, you know there's always Cessnas flying over but then I also saw a passenger jet coming over at the same time so the timing was right so I made sure I stayed there and got some footage of an airplane flying over the 405. Hectic. This area is hectic. So it's 418. Thank you. That's so kind of early for me, but I got uh, I've got uh, a meeting at the library at six, which sounds like that's very. Uh, very far away from now time wise but it's important so I gotta make sure I leave myself leave myself enough time to recover. So that guy's in a big hurry to sit on the uh, freeway and wait in traffic. Oh man. So today is day 15 of riding this bike to work. And uh, for some reason my legs are pretty sore today. I'm not complaining, I'm just, uh, it's just the status. OC commuter physical status update. Yeah, I'm gonna take the same route I did yesterday. Yesterday my camera shut off. I was going so slow. I think it was like an hour and 26 minutes. But I took Main Street and I was just, just cruising, you know? And just enjoying uh, Main Street. Uh, but 
I didn't take the Santiago Creek Trail. I took Maine over to La Vida, La Vida to Batavia. And then my camera died about a half a mile out of downtown Orange. But I was... Uh, I was I was filming in 60 frames, so that's probably why. Yeah, that's a pretty long video anyway. But like I said, I'm probably just gonna use the first part of it. Maybe just up to Main Street, I don't know. I really wish I had time to spend on all this footage I get because I feel like it's all pretty good, you know? At least if I had time to chop up some of these videos and make some shorter videos for to maybe attract some new subscribers that um, are bypassing the channel because the videos are so intimidatingly long. Um, but any of the short videos I tried out recently, they don't get like, I put one minute, like 20 minute video last week. It got like 80 views. I mean, that's not, I don't care, but it's like, it's, it's not, I want to do the long form videos every day, and so that was just like kind of an extra video. But um, I think the way to get to get more people interested in uh, the channel is yeah the YouTube Shorts, which I know that you know YouTube's going to push those videos a lot more, especially if they have anything of any kind of shock value or controversy those videos get pushed if you make a decent respectful video they don't push those videos they like stuff with uh, shock value but that's our human nature so Yeah, a, a lot of the stuff that I see and experience on a pretty regular basis, maybe not every day. That I think is normal, or I don't even trip out on anymore. Probably definitely does have some shock value if I just slowed down and took the time to point out certain things that I come across. Well, hopefully uh, this pain in my legs is just uh, me getting warmed up. Maybe hopefully it's not like uh, doesn't mess with my ability to maintain a decent pace. So my ride this morning, I kept a pretty steady pace and I made it in 56 minutes um, without any distractions, so that was okay. But ultimately I wanna do the ride in 50 minutes. I promise that that won't be today. There's no way I can make it that fast today. I mean, we'll try. I mean, I never try to go fast, but I'm just talking like, mainly when I talk about going fast, it's just that I don't get sidetracked. Um, but I like getting sidetracked too, but today we don't have that option. So I'll probably just take, uh, Obviously, we're gonna almost always start out on Main Street. I did a Red Hill video not too long ago, so I don't feel pressed to go anywhere around Tustin. Uh, so I'll probably just go, uh, I'll probably just go through the neighborhoods in between Main Street and the Pacific Electric bike path.
So the ride home, I just, I don't think I'll ever be able to get a 50 minute ride home just because it always takes longer. Humans, humans and canines, the beagles, beagles. This guy see me? Yeah. have to do a curb jump around this guy. Oh man. We got a green light with only two seconds left. Damn it. Ah, here we are once again sitting at MacArthur and Main Street. Main Street and MacArthur. In the sun. Sun's reapplying my fading farmer's tan. I was so happy that it was disappearing, but now it's back. So that's a Queensland healer. Queensland healers are. Uh, the type of uh, the type of dogs that will bite you. They're snappy little snappy little dogs. I was bit by one in the back of all places. I was uh, swinging on a swing and I guess my shirt was blowing in the wind. I was probably in third or fourth grade and my friend's dog jumped up while I was swinging and tried to bite my shirt and bit me in the back. Oh, shift, shift. All right, let's get in the street. Hong Kong. Uh, get out of the road! The 
This is a pretty nice gear right here. This easy pedaling and nice speed. Yeah. We'll stay in this one. This feels low impact. Pretty amazing, how, like the elevation, how it changes it's so drastically. I mean, you, it makes sense because I mean we're basically kind of heading towards the foothills. But I think we, what did we end up at? 240 feet couple hundred feet we climb well, the wind will definitely never work to our advantage going north or east. Seems like it's always blowing down from the canyons. But what do I know? Orange Coast Lumber. Are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. down this street yeah they've really cleaned up the streets I can remember this time last year this whole grass area would be filled with homeless people cold chilling it's kind of boring now uh, here's the lady that's always smiling she looked more serious today than she usually is So, we'll jump on this Pacific Electric real quick and get across the uh, couple of the main roads and then we'll go through the neighborhood.
Right. So we'll go up here one block and then we'll go, maybe we'll go to the right. We'll go to the right and just go through some of those neighborhoods. It's just, if we go right, if we go right right here, it's not good because there's no spot for me to cross some of these major roads, so. We're gonna go left and go on uh, Orange or Cypress. this way. Never been on that street. So yeah, we'll take a little neighborhood ride today. All the way to, uh, to First Street. And on this street, we have the uh, traffic lights. And we'll probably end up taking uh, Santiago or Lincoln. I don't know which. Doesn't really matter. Let's look at this. Let's look at the neighborhood.
Yeah, this is gonna be a hard ride, guys. My legs are just, they're just sore. Very sore. Weak, weak and sore. It's all right though. We're gonna do, we're gonna keep going. This is part of me, part of my training. For what, I don't know. Part of my endurance training. Look at the guy with a leaf blower, I'm telling you. Everywhere I go, dude. I can't escape it. And I guess I can hit this button. By the time I get to the button, then it's going to change. E bike. What's he riding? What's he riding? What you got? Derwin. All right. So I think like residential streets, that's uh, what I've explored the least. I think I know most major streets, most alleys, but like residential streets, I don't ride them as much. Obviously I've been on this one a bunch of times. On the e-bike, it's not really... You know, on the e-bike, you're going so fast, it's not really... The footage isn't that good because you don't really get to, to see anything. Because, you know, I'm typically going to be going over 20 miles an hour. But if you're cruising... Cruising at this speed, I mean a lot to see in the everyday life of uh, Santaneros. We just climbed 40 feet. Oh man. Alrighty, lighty. Let's go. Let's 
Let's go. Yeah, man, these lights are killers. Jeez. Wow, man, these lights suck. Look at that, yeah, right through the red light, bro. See that? Man. Right. Not much to talk about, folks. Enjoy the ride. Next week, it might rain. So I probably should stockpile some videos. So that's, I guess that's the question, right? So let's say, I wake up tomorrow and it's raining. What am I going to do? I don't really have a plan. I think... Uh, I think I would ride this bike. But my rain gear... So my rain gear is uh, good, but it's, it's rain gear. And sitting on a seat like this, so it's, uh, it's basically like overalls that you pull up over your shoulders. And then, um, Yeah, and then you put the jacket over. But I think that they sag now. So it's big enough so it can fit over my regular clothes, but it's gonna, it's gonna sag. So it's gonna get caught on the seat. So I don't know how that's going to work out. And then the getting wet part is... I mean, I think it's just going to be... The rain suit's going to be encumbering for pedaling a bike, you know?
see a lot of white guys walking around these neighborhoods. Especially going into the alleys. Oh, look at this cross. So he's probably he's probably meeting that other guy that was standing on the corner would be my my guess. Keep trying. Wow, look at this street. So they're gonna put, they put brick over here on Main Street. I think I pointed it out this morning. So they're gonna put it right here too. That's gonna look great. It's gonna look awesome. All right, let's get this light. Full speed ahead. All right, so yeah, we'll just stay on here till 17th Street and then we'll take 17th Street to Santiago. And then take the Santiago Creek Trail all the way to the X marks the spot. Oh shit. oh shit! All right, I'm back. Man, that's gonna be a hell of a video, guys. So, something like this was bound to happen. So, I don't know how, how this video is gonna turn out, but I was riding in the street and I guess I should have been farther away from that car. And the guy swung the door open and I hit his door. So, lesson learned. I've got a big gash on my face, but other than that, I think the bike is fine. Oh, let's see. Find out. That is amazing that this bike is still intact. I'm just trying to get home now. But I'm jacked up. I was in the bike lane in the designated bike street and the guy swung his door open and I hit his door. Even my helmet's broken. <laughs> Holy shit. It's just the way it goes bound to happen man but when you got cars passing you you know you're in the bike lane cars are passing you like where are you supposed to go you know 
Dude, I hit that car so freaking hard. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. So I don't know if he gave me his ride information. I mean, I don't know. I, do I look out my, my door before I swing the door open into the street? I always look. Because I'm always afraid a car is going to hit it, you know? But I'm trying to stay over to the right because there's cars next to me. So, I don't know. Hey, man. I'm just glad I got a na nasty gash on my face. So. Like, it's bleeding all over. Scraped up my elbow. My pedals got messed up. But we're gonna keep rocking. It's all good. I have it on film, so... Whatever. OC Commuter's first crash. That took, uh, actually it's my second one. That's how quick, sh that's how quick stuff happens, man. Oh my God, dude. So do I put this video up or do I not? That's the question. That's the question, man. This bike is a freaking tank, bro. Dude, if that would have been the e-bike, I would have been going 25 miles an hour. I would have been done. And I do think about that. I do worry about people opening their doors. But I always figure like somebody's just gonna kinda slowly open their door and then I have time to react. But that door swung open like freaking, like max, <laughs> like, like max speed. It was so fast. It's just like, wow. Crazy. Dude, his door was messed up. He couldn't close his door in his car. Like his whole door was bent forward. Now my jaw's starting to hurt. So I'm, I could have some head trauma because my face hit the window. My face took the impact. I mean, he might try to get me to pay for his door. I'm talking to my wife right now, sorry. I don't know. Yeah, the gash on my face is gnarly. Crazy.
Yeah, I haven't looked at the gash on my face, but it was bleeding a lot. All right, no more talking about the accident. Let's continue on with the ride. Whatever, that's, that's the, uh, that's the uh, life of a person that commutes on a bike every day. And, you know, consistently putting themselves in a dangerous situation, you know. But, you know, if I would have been on the sidewalk, that wouldn't have happened, you know. I mean, I don't know. Who swings their door open like that? That's crazy. <laughs> Holy shit, that guy's door was jacked. So I'm going to contact uh, some of my subscribers or I'll probably make a comment on a video to see if I should uh, publish this video or not. I just don't want to get like a bunch of a bunch of people saying like I thought it was my fault. Yeah, man. My jaw hurts. Yeah, here's the, the towel. <laughs> I was like, is my face bleeding? And people are like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man. My beautiful face. This helmet saved my ass. Wear your helmet, guys. If I didn't have this helmet on, uh, dude, I wouldn't have got up. There's no freaking way. If I wouldn't have had a helmet on, I would have split my freaking head open. It would have been done. I would still, I would be in an ambulance right now, 100%. So if you ride a bike, look at how slow I was going. I was going that slow and did that much damage. So, like, wear a helmet, man. If you don't wear a helmet, even if you're on a freaking BMX, my head would have been just, oh my God, I probably would have had a concussion. Because I can remember feeling my helmet hit the door, like, bam! We should look at the helmet, let's see. So, my helmet's uh, not a fancy one, so. See. Oh, it's not that bad. It just broke the it just broke the little bill. It's pretty badass. Alright guys. Oh my god, that could have been so much worse. Yeah, he was apologizing sort of, but not really, just a little bit. But he was just more worried about his door. 
and uh, I have his name and number. I didn't look at his license, but I have his uh, uh, license plate number. Thank God, dude. Salty rider, dude. This bike is a tank. Brother. <laughs> dude. See what I mean? Everybody has German Shepherds. <laughs> I guess the guy's getting upset at his dog. All right. So lesson learned the hard way. Watch out for car doors. So like an illegal I guess I will go on and on about this. I guess it's a significant accident, you know? Um, so in, in legal regard, so I'm in a bike lane, uh, a lane that's designated for biking, the whole lane. So I'm riding, this time I happen to be riding responsibly, I thought. Um, but if I'm in that lane, I can't be in the middle of the lane. It says I can use the full lane, but that's only if you're going, if you can maintain the, the speed, you know, if, if you can go 25 miles an hour, then yeah, use the whole lane. But if not, then, uh, hopefully I didn't break the lens on my camera. I didn't think about that. So yeah. So yeah, watch out for doors opening, but when you go to get out of your car and you know there's oncoming traffic and you're on the side of the road, don't you look before you open your door? Or do you just swing it open and hope there's not a car passing by? I mean, that door sticking out, that door is four feet long was long massive so that's four feet into a lane a car could have easily just ripped that dude's door off so i don't know i kind of think it was his fault i mean it's my fault in the sense that i should be smarter and be able to you know predict something like that but when I have cars behind me, where, you know, where else am I supposed to go? So then I guess I put myself in his position. So if I'm getting out of a car, and somebody crashes into my door. Like I swing it open without looking and I hit somebody, I hit a cyclist. I'm thinking it's my fault no matter what. Like 100%, I'm gonna feel responsible for it.
So my wife just sent me a article that says that that, that it's his uh, his responsibility that you're not supposed to open the door like that into oncoming traffic in a bike lane or a regular lane. I've been seeing people do this a lot lately, walk backwards. I mean, that door, guy's door, that's gonna cost him a thousand bucks to fix. That's gonna cost him at least whatever his insurance deductible is. So I think my my camera shut off. Yeah. I don't know if I shut it off or if the camera shut off itself. Hill climb. Alright. I'm just gonna feel dumb walking around with a big old gash on my face. It's gonna look like I was in a fight or something. So I saw uh, that guy, William Campbell, he actually rode through, he was riding at night and he rode through a, uh, through a, uh, a stop sign. He was going left into a four-way stop and oncoming traffic was coming this way, this car. He didn't stop, he just went through the intersection but a car was coming this way and he was going this way. And the car ran the stop sign and hit him. It's like hit the front of his bike and you know, he ate it. 
like kind of messed up his front tire and his handlebars and stuff. And then he stopped riding. He, he rode after that for a little bit, but then he said he got uh, PTSD from getting, getting hit by a car. All right, well, thank you so much for watching my video, and we will catch you on the next one. You guys, watch out for car doors.